I'm really looking forward to this. We just gonna sit and just talk about stories. He could not catch Steve Smith. Throws to Largent, he'll never get him. The legends, Steve Largent, Steve Smith, Michael Irvin, just picking their brain. It's sensational catch by Steve Largent. How we love the game, the time that we put in. What a catch! And Michael Irvin goes 87 yards. Right there, that's what I do best. Catch ball! Guys that really love the game of football, that respected the game of football, that enjoyed going out there playing for the fans, and that wanted to make their mark in the NFL. Okay, guys, this is the 100th anniversary. I'm sitting here with some of the best receivers to ever play the game. We got Michael Irvin, Steve Smith, Steve Largent. To watch Steve Largent and see what he did, is watching him in Seattle, and watching you two battle in the Super Bowl always <laughs> came through. And now I get to sit at the table with some of the players that I prayed about, just having an inkling of ability like you guys. To be Steve Large and to be Jerry Rice. Oh. Occasionally catch a slant and be Michael Irvin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so th th that's, for me, I, I honestly, I don't believe I'm a great. I just get the opportunity to be around greatness and hopefully one day just be in a conversation. So this is an honor and privilege for me. Uh, Steven, I, I tell you what you're talking about. It, it reminds me so much. Uh, and you'll see it in a few short years when we're in the Hall of Fame. You see all of those guys that you've watched all your life, man that you want it to be like, and you're here, and you're playing the game because of what they did, and, and, and to be, be here, man. I, I, I too, love Steve Larger. I had Jerry Rice in his own red and in his white jersey in my locker. And I, I, I told Jerry that story a long time ago when we first got a chance to play in the Pro Bowl together. I was like, man, I had you in my locker, man. I can't believe I'm lining up in the Pro Bowl. No, that's you, not man. all what you said, That was Michael. a lot with all no, that. No, that was not say. all what you said, Michael. <laughs> Michael stood up and he said, man, I look so good. <laughs> and I remember you doing that right in the he locker room. He still does it. Yes. Yes, yes. And it was his first time Jerry and I really had a conversation to it. And Jerry, he's so competitive now. He's so competitive. And he, Jerry, the first thing he said, good, good job, Dave. Good job this year. <laughs> no, Michael. Good job. We competed this year. He said, but I'm getting ready already. I'm already <laughs> training. It was the Pro Bowl. <laughs> like, dude, what you mean you're training for next year already? This is the Pro Bowl. I want to have a good time. Let's just chill out and hang out. I'm already training for next year. I'm going to tell you right hey, now. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. Well, I, I had a different experience than you guys did. I was uh, actually uh, drafted in the fourth round by the Oilers, and uh, Bum Phillips called me into his office and said, Steve, we uh, have all the receivers we need here in Houston, and we're going to let you go, and uh, good luck to you. Mm. And so I thought my career was over before it even started. And I got a call from Seattle about two days later, and they said, hey, if you want another chance, we'll give it to you. And so I flew up to Seattle, and I brought a bag about this big and about that tall, and I thought, you know, I don't know if I can make this team either. But I went up there and made the team, and uh, I think that really colored my experience in the NFL to a great deal because I never took anything for granted. Because when you have you have some a shocking experience like that, it makes you get real, real fast. Steve, I think I remember just watching you, and and you were just a tough guy on the football field. You were nasty. guy he's not really a big guy but he owns it and the route running and the hands you know I was really amazed by that and Michael let's go back <laughs> I used to always compare myself to Michael I would watch everything he was doing on the football field if he had 10 or more receptions if he had over a uh, hundred something yards I wanted to have a better day you know, Steve, watching you, you know, it's, it's like you were angry. You see this face? That means I score. That's what I do best. Ice up, son. Ice up. The thing is, it was not about the defensive back. It was about, you know, what you were putting on yourself to go out and excel and be exceptional on the football field. And as wide receivers, it's like we're competing between ourselves because you want to be great on that given day. To be honest with you, I never thought that I would be able to play professional football, to do something that I really love, to play with a team that had God. Joe was God. Yeah. Joe Montana. <laughs> it, it was just unbelievable to be able to go to San Francisco and play on an exceptional team like that. And it's just something I'll never forget. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I was never the fastest guy. 
So, so watching large Steve Large, and I was like, okay, all right, you know, because because everybody talked about speed at wide receiver speed, and I can't tell you, it hunted me, because I said, man, I can't run, I got, I, I can't run in the NFL. And then Jerry, I remember you getting drafted, and he said, well, he he only ran this time, he ran that time, and then I would be watching. I was like, man, ain't nobody ever running them down. Look at this dude who's flying, man. You know, it encouraged me. I said, okay. It's not just about speed. I can play in this league. These guys are tearing up the league, and, and they're not running four threes and all that. So, so I can play in the league. I can't tell you how much that helped me. We were not like this guy, because you were fast. You yeah, were killing fast it. Fast and strong. I mean, you say you weren't fast, but then when I watched your film, you know, despite the, the reel it was on either, uh, you know, beta or, or VHS. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> okay, I know we old school. Okay, all right. But here's the thing, you know, you know, we would go to the store, you know, they had the wide receivers or the, or the follies or the highlights. Yeah, it really I did love, have that I on looked, VHS. You're yes, right, you're, you're, I, you're not lying. You're yes, really wild. I looked right, forward right. to a night emulated and tried to mimic catch it, right. the catches, the toe tapping. Steve Largent over the shoulder when he catch the fade and he just keep it tight right there and had that 80, <laughs> right? One of the coolest things when I was with Carolina, I got them to give me some tape and I studied you on one particular route yeah. is how you ran the 18 yard comeback. Pass is complete to Jerry Wright. Jerry Rice has been absolutely brilliant tonight. Double team this man. <laughs> <laughs> he was uncoverable on the 18 yard comeback. When they said, what route you want to run? Yeah. I looked at him like, that was your route. A comeback. That was you want to go? No, nah, I want to come back. You do everything and just move them. You run in there, you just take that dollar. Yeah. Stop on oh, it, give, yes, them, sir. give yeah. them 100 pennies. Yeah. Just change. Yeah. Ching! Like and that. come back and catch it high and tight. And so those are the things, like, when I say that I try to marry you guys, I studied. Going to Jerry Rice. And it's Steve Largent gets a wide open. Try me if you want to. You'll go broke. Jumping catch at the three. Touchdown. Oh, what a play. I, I got a question. This is one question, and so I'm gonna start with Steve first. How did you do it in the equipment that you wore, the cleats? Because they had the AstroTurf. Yeah. Looking at the technology of the equipment now, what do you think about it? Well, I, I tell you, it's it's been vastly improved for sure. And the fields, for one, the, the oh AstroTurf God. fields are much better. Uh, today than they were they when, were when really. we played. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, was, we basically good. played on asphalt, and then they had a thin piece of rubber, and then the turf was on top of that, and that was it. So there was like, no, it out, no like, give. In the room. And roll it out. And yep. you were gonna lose some skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd yeah. go through a season, and my my elbows would all have scabs and stuff like that, and sticking to the sheets when you wake up in the morning, mm. it, it was bad. What about the cleats though? Well, cleats were not very good either, especially when they first started wearing turf shoes. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even know how to make. A, a good turf cleat. You tear your feet up. That's that's yeah. the yeah. thing I always looked out for was my feet. I could play hurt with a lot of things, but I couldn't play hurt with my feet. Even on Astro Turf, what I did, I, I wore tennis change, shoes yeah. at times. Yeah. It would grab it, wow. it would grab you and stuff like that. You change the way you run them routes. Yeah. From from natural turf to Astro Turf, you change the way you run some routes. Absolutely. You grab so yeah. much. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you guys. Now, did you guys wear gloves? At the end of my career, there was still not gloves that you would ever wear in a game. But did you wear gloves consistently in games? Because I'll tell you, those gloves they wear today yeah. are The gloves that they awesome. wear today are different. Are different. I'm going to tell you guys, at Mississippi Valley State University, we couldn't afford gloves, OK? <laughs> so I was just like, you know, barehanded and stuff like that. Then when I got to the NFL, I started wearing gloves. and But, you know, it was a different type of uh, texture and all that. But it was old Newman yeah. gloves. Yeah, Newman gloves. Newman I, I started gloves. with the Newman gloves and, and they at were first. Just right, because I, I didn't wear them in college either. I remember coming into Dallas, and I talked so much noise coming in. I'm here now. We're going to win the Super Bowl. I can turn catch a BB in the dark. Somebody turn out the light and shoot a BB gun. <laughs> I got in my first training camp and dropped everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I dropped everything. I lost my confidence. Everson Walls, man, he played me, came up. 
like he was gonna jam it. Then he backed off and then snuck jam. I said, oh my God. I ain't never been jammed to my feet. I said, oh my God. I said, oh. I said, okay, this is a okay. different level. I went and got my eyes checked. They were checking my hands. <laughs> Then I went to the gloves and started gaining my confidence back. And, and I played in the gloves ever since then. But have you guys ever lost confidence? You know, because for me, when I first came in, I had so many drops. And, and I, I was like, what is going on yeah, here? Because, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, because I knew how to catch the football. I, I, I knew how to anything. catch the football, but right. there was so much going on mentally where it just took away from my focus on the field, you know, catching the ball. I would do it during practice. And then once I got in the ball game, I was way too anxious. I had to fight through that adversity, but yep. once I did that, then I said, okay, I got this now. He was dropping passes earlier in the year, and he really got uptight about it. He need never worry anymore. I tell young guys all the time, if you're playing the position of wide receiver, if you leave that huddle and you're thinking about, okay, what route do I run, you're already lost. Mm. You have to leave the huddle saying, how do I win on this route? As Soon as you hear the play, the route has to be automatic. That's why when we played in the Pro Bowl and we would put in the uh, West Coast office, I was like, oh my God, this is a lot of three jets gap. What is yeah. this? What do I run? Yeah. So I got a numbers guy. Right, right. I'm a numbers guy. So I said, Troy, listen, I don't know none of this. None of this. <laughs> so he just said, he, he would call out to play three jets gap. He looked at me and said, two Three route. <laughs> right, right. He called to play, look at me, four route. I said, okay, I can do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, let me ask you guys this, though. Do you guys think the the game is in a good place right now. You know, they want to make the game safer. And I thought, I said, man, they're making the game soft. I can't take it until my son started playing. I said, we got to make this game better. <laughs> you know, it, it was OK. <laughs> they were making it soft for everybody else. And then my son started playing. I said, yeah, they, they got to make it safer. So I, I was happy about that. Well, you yeah. I love the game today. Uh, they're, they're throwing the ball more. Uh, it's a lot, lot shorter routes. So a guy will have an average of seven yards a catch today, over my whole career for 14 years, I averaged 16 yards a catch. Mm. And you don't find very many receivers right. today that average 16 yards a catch. They're catching seven, eight yards a catch. We had to run routes at certain depths and, and uh, be at certain places at certain times. And that was everything about playing wide receivers, being at the right place at the right time, give your quarterback a good target, and then catch the ball. The game has changed a little bit. You guys went against corners that followed you everywhere. The yeah, backfield, yeah, yeah. and I always say, if you lined up in the parking lot, he would be the parking lot attendant, yeah, yeah. right? He'd, oh, Jerry, come in. Here's your parking ticket, right? You know, so yeah. I, I think the game has changed to that degree. You just reminded me of something. Dion used to follow me all over the field, and we were in Atlanta, Georgia. And right before the snap of the ball, he wanted to shake my hand. Come on, I Steve. See, see Steve, you know back in the day. Here's the deal. We can, we can be friends that. after the ball game. But during the actual game, <laughs> we are enemies. Right. So he's trying to shake my hand, and I'm just slapping his hand away. I'm like, get away from me right now. It's, you know, it's about to go down. It was time to go out and just do battle. And I wanted to be the best on that given day. If I had a game where I had around 10 receptions, 200 yards, I wanted to come back the next week and have a better game. So it's like, as receivers, I think we just put pressure on ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a 12-round prize fight. There's a bounty on Michael Urko. If they talk noise at you, man, first thing you do, you want to drop six on them. Yeah. Then you want to drop six again. Then all of a sudden, the, the game is completely quiet. But you, you used to have stuff up in your locker. I was different. Yeah. I actually, I wanted to get them uh, in a run started. game. If I had a guy who was talking, Man, that first run play. You're going to hit him in his mouth. I'm going to hit everything. <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah. I just tell him, the referee cannot save you. I will get done with you when I am done with you. When I talked, I really wasn't talking to the corner. He had the opportunity when he guarded me to hear me talk myself right. into right, 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 what right. I felt was there. It's like, made you the best. like I said, I would say, that defensive coordinator believes he can cover me one-on-one. -on -one. You don't think I'm one of the best? You better check your reference. And when I was spinning the ball, I was spinning it like, why do they think that? <laughs> How dare them? <laughs> to disrespect you like that? Yes, I'm 5'9", I get all that, but 
how did you think this was possible? And I had a guy one time talk to me, he said something, and I said, looked at him, I said, sir, go ask your defensive coordinator, are you allowed to cover me one-on-one? -on -one? Right. And then get back to me. Yeah, so a few plays go, right. series comes back, and I said, um, did you talk to your guy? <laughs> His next word was blankety blank. Yeah. I said, I looked at him, I said, I guess he said no, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got 65 minutes of football. We got five yeah. minutes after the damn game. I love playing a physical game. My first preseason game, I'm playing against the Raiders, and, and Mike Haynes was out there. Oh. And, and, and it was a run play all the way on the other side. And I sprinted, and I caught him. And I'm walking back to the huddle. He's ready. Look at him. Boy, you hit me like that again, I'm gonna whoop your ass. You kiss a preseason game, you don't do that. And I was like, whoa, I guess, you know, I'm trying to let people know that I'm in this league now and I'm not playing pay to cake. I remember I, I went up against those guys. Yeah. Lester Hayes, he had all this Stick stuff him. all yeah. over him and stuff like that. <laughs> and then, you know, he, you know, he's down in front of me, man, and it's just like he's drooling at the mouth. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> 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 like, is this the NFL? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you, Steve, talking about what drives you crazy or, or, or things. Being at this table, being a non-African-American wide receiver, did you have to deal with people shortchanging you, or even also some, some, yeah. some racism. Did you ever experience that? And if you did, how was it? I really didn't experience it very much in my career, or maybe I didn't, I just ignored it, uh, because I don't remember it very often. But there was one time, we were getting ready to play the Cleveland Browns, and they had two cornerbacks that were very good cornerbacks, and they just talked trash the entire game. I remember them jokes, though. <laughs> yeah. When you say Cleveland yeah. Browns, yeah. everybody's going to know they were. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if they do, but... Uh, they were, yeah, but so, they were bad boys. Now. Yeah, and they said it in the paper before the game. But to me, it was never a black-white issue. It was just okay. team versus team. I'm glad to say we won that game, and I had a very good game. Off the 36 margin, has a first down up to the 42-yard line. Who are some of the guys that you guys watch growing up? I, I can tell you, a guy comes, jumps into my head right away when you ask the question, and that's Fred Bolitnikoff. Mm, I love and him. I used to just study what he did. He actually counted his steps. I just found it really interesting the way he played the game, but he could catch the ball like nobody's business and always came up with clutch plays. It was the most valuable player in the Super Bowl. Throws under a heavy pressure. Oh, Bolitnikoff no. wide open at the 30, the 25, down to the two yard line. For me, you know, watching Steve Largent, uh, Drew Pearson, Lynn Swan, mm. Stallworth, yeah, all John those guys. Stallworth. I would try to emulate those guys. Mm. Like Lynn Swan, how he could control his oh body was when phenomenal. the ball was, was up in the air. It, it was just beautiful, man. And for me, because I started actually playing tight end for a while, and I'm going to tell you, man, I love Kellen Winslow. Growing up in Miami, I watched him play against the Miami Dolphins, and he had a great game. And, and, he, and he was exhausted. It was so hot down yeah, there. I remember. They would have and to carry, carry him yeah. off the field. He's cramping up. He's hurt. And they go first down, second down, and it's third and nine again. And he comes running back out. He will catch that third and out. They would have to carry him off the field again. This was the most incredible game I'd ever seen. He wore number 80. I put on number 80 because <laughs> I wanted to be Kelly Winslow, man. It, it was phenomenal, man. Ball down the middle of the field, Odell Beckham Jr. Did he make the catch? Yes, touchdown! touchdown. Swings it downfield, catches made, DeAndre Hopkins! Who's the current player that can just continue this legacy? There's so many physically gifted guys out there. I mean, I, I, I look at guys like Julio Jones, and I say, wow. When you talk about God gift to the position, big, tall, fluid, fast, I mean, catch anything and catch any route. In my day, if you had the big guy, yeah. and then you had the small, fast guy. Yeah. This was the big guy and the fast guy, all in one guy. I mean, he's just a phenomenal guy. But a guy I don't think give a lot of, the people give a lot of credit to that I just love, man, is it, Michael Thomas. Phenomenal player, physical, he loves the game. And everybody knows he's really basically their only asset at wide receiver, yeah. and you still can't stop him. And I think that's what a playmaker is. You know. I'm going to get the ball. Your mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, <laughs> niece, and nephew know they're throwing me this ball, and you still can't stop it. It's about imposing your will, and those young men definitely do that. What about you, Mr. Smith? DeAndre Hopkins. I love the way he, he runs, runs great routes. Uh, he's played with 15, 16 quarterbacks. Yeah. But yet, his production never drops. 
So I, I just love his body control, his ability to catch the ball anywhere on the field. Odell Beckham. Yeah. I mean, Odell, what, what he brings to the game, very competitive, runs good routes. You can tell that he's that playmaker on that football field. I tell you, the, the, the guy that just jumps out in my mind is a guy that I think emulated your career and that's Larry Fitzgerald, yeah, a guy him. that's yeah. done it year in, year out, good him. quarterback, bad quarterback. He's going to catch 100 balls. He's going to be down there blocking for his running back. He's going to be encouraging his teammates. He's doing everything that I think you need to do to be a great uh, NFL player, and he's done it for a long time now. And it's a pitch to Fitz running straight ahead into the end zone of the shovel pass for the touchdown of the win. Well, you heard it from the best, Michael Irvin, Steve Smith, Steve Largent. Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. <laughs> <laughs>